Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Sponsored by a step-in-time chimney. It was indeed a historic night. The first game ever played at the new $72 million S.B. Ballard Stadium. Monarch fans were in awe as they experienced a college football game like they never had before in Norfolk. And while they sat in their comfortable seats and grabbed dinner from the new concession stands, they also saw a thrilling game between two local teams looking to impress. But that was last week. This week it's off to Blacksburg. What's in store for the Monarchs? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with head coach Bobby Wilder. Welcome to the season premiere of the Old Dominion Football Show. And coach, before we talk about the Hokies, last weekend's first game at the new stadium is a night none of us will ever forget. An incredible experience, Bruce. And I was thinking back and standing in the tunnel before the game to 2009 and then to walk out 10 years later and see this stadium and, and credit you know, President Broderick, Athletic Director Seelig, Steve Ballard, and everybody that worked with them, Bruce, because you're talking about a two-year job. They completed in nine months, and to get that done to the level they did, I've been all over the country, Bruce, in 32 years of coaching. For a venue that size, 22,000, that's the nicest venue in America that, at that size. I emphasize at that size. It is just a phenomenal venue, great experience. Players loved it. It was a great night. During the offseason, you confided to me that this mm -hmm. was going to be a rebuilding year. I mean, mm -hmm. how many players did you lose, many of them, mm -hmm. to the NFL? Mm -hmm. Did you and your staff really have any idea how your team was going to react on Saturday? No, I, I knew just from the last eight months that they would play hard, they compete, you know, they wanted to atone for not having the success last year. We wanted Bruce, but we had, we had 57 players play in the game Saturday night, 23 of them the first time ever playing a game for Old Dominion, Bruce. And we had 14 new starters. We had eight new starters on offense, six on defense. So I, I knew there would be some up and downs within the game, but I love the way they completed, uh, competed, Bruce. This, our theme is new team, new year, and I know we're going to get better each week as we play and gain experience. You tried out three quarterbacks during mm -hmm. the spring and during the summer. You decided to go with Stone Smart mm -hmm. on Saturday in your first game. He mm -hmm. had one pass that he wished he could have gotten back, but right. other than that, I thought he did a pretty good job. He did, Bruce. He played really well, and, and going into the game, we thought we might play three quarterbacks, at least two of them. We knew Stevie Williams was going to play wide receiver. He was ready to play quarterback. Messiah DeWeaver uh, was in close competition with Stone during the year. But as the game started, those first two drives, we'd go 11 plays, 65 yards on the opening drive. Uh, and Stone's perfect on that drive, completes every pass, runs the ball well. Second drive, he runs it in from 12 yards for a touchdown. So we're up 14 nothing, and, and he's perfect. And as we went through the first half, Bruce, he was 9 for 10 passing in the first half. His only incompletion, he threw the ball away. So he was on every throw, and that's why we stuck with him. He was playing good football. The one interception you mentioned happened in the fourth quarter. He, he was late down the field to Chris Cunningham. Chris Cunningham was open initially. He didn't see it. He tried to throw it late, which is a that's what we preach to the quarterbacks, never late down the field. But then he led us on a game-winning drive at the end. So he played good football. He'll get the start Saturday in Blacksburg. And looking in past years, mm -hmm. uh, David Washington, Blake LaRusso, they come in. People go, hey, is this guy going to be good enough to carry him through the season? Right. And they seem to improve every week. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're hoping with Stone? Yeah, it, it takes time at the quarterback position, especially when you're playing Division One. Every mistake is magnified. You know, the late throw down the field, it's magnified because there's a good player back there in Quinterly who intercepts it. So it, it's a process, a process of development. It's his first time playing college football. He played at the junior college level. But what I really liked, Bruce, that I saw Saturday night was tremendous poise. He was confident. He was well organized on the field. You could just feel the confidence he had. And that helps his teammates. And you can't emphasize that enough at quarterback, that, that self-confidence that permeates throughout everybody in the organization. He's got it. It's only going to help him get better. Your defense, which cost you a few games last year with an mm -hmm. entirely new coaching staff, right. I was impressed. Uh, as was I with Coach Blackwell and his, and his staff. They only allowed 268 yards in this game, Bruce, which is the second lowest total in the last four years. 
out of an Old Dominion defense. Three turnovers in this game, two interceptions. Caleb Ford DeMent early with the interception, Lance Boykin with the interception at the end of the game uh, to win it. And then Justin Richardson caused a fumble. Geronda Hall recovered it. We had another interception, excuse me, Bruce, in the game, but we had a late hit on the quarterback, Jordan Young, with a tremendous interception. So interceptions, sacks, Bruce, TFLs, that's all what is expected from a Blackwell defense. And he played predominantly base defense Saturday night. We didn't get in a lot of other scheme that we have, which we'll unveil this weekend. Last year, you pulled off what many believe was the biggest sports upset mm -hmm. in the country with mm -hmm. that win over Virginia Tech. I don't think the Hokies are going to be taking you for granted on Saturday. No, <laughs> and I I didn't don't expect they will. Uh, I don't feel like they did last year. Um, this is a big game for them, Bruce. As you know, they lost last week to Boston College. So, you know, they're 0-1 right now. They've lost seven of their last 10 games as a program, which hasn't happened there in the last 30 years. This is a talented football team. It's a well-coached team. I thought they were the better team last weekend at Boston College, but they turned the ball over five times in that game and only got one back. You go minus four, Bruce you're not going to win. That, that's less than 10% you win that game, yet it was 35-28. It was a one-score game. So we know they'll be ready, Bruce. The environment in Blacksburg will be uh, exciting for our football team, and I expect we'll see a good Virginia Tech team Saturday. These new transfer rules are mm. crazy. You have mm -hmm. two players mm -hmm. who played for Virginia Tech last year starting mm -hmm. for you, right. and they're going to be out there during the coin toss as mm -hmm. your captains. Yeah, both Eric Kuma, the wide receiver who had four catches for 65 yards, big 31-yard catch, the last drive of the Norfolk State game, and Chris Cunningham, uh, who had one catch in the game. We just missed him for a touchdown in the end zone in this game. i it really excited with these two. They'll be captains along with Garner and Weaver. They've been with us for four months, Bruce. Just tremendous people, great leaders. Our players look up to them because of the success they had. They had multiple scholarship offers, Bruce. A lot of power five, and we're fortunate to have them in our program. All right, Coach. Still to come, he was one of those guys we were just talking about on the other side of ODU's win over Virginia Tech. Now he's playing for the Monarchs. When we come back, Former Hokie Chris Cunningham joins Nathan Epstein in the One Minute Drill. We're back with the Old Dominion Football Show in the One Minute Drill, and with us, one of the new faces on the team, Chris Cunningham, the transfer tight end from Virginia Tech. First of all, how has it been wearing a Monarch jersey? Uh, it's been well. Um, just getting acclimated to the new system, things like that, but I'm loving it. All right, what is your favorite sport besides football? Basketball. That was my first um, first sport I ever played before I played football. So, Do you have a favorite memory of playing basketball? Any particular play that stands out? Any big moment that stands out? Uh, middle school, when we played Fort Caroline, uh, middle school, I hit the game winning three. All right, if you were to get a check for a million dollars, the first thing you would do with it is what? Uh, invest in the real estate so I can make more money. <laughs> if you could eat anything nonstop, it would be what? Probably Skittles. <laughs> yeah, I like Skittles. Skittles are Starburst. I guess it could be Skittles if you just wanted a big plate of Skittles, but what would be your last meal? I'm just sticking to the basic chicken tenders and some fries. Hey. That'll be the last meal. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with staying simple. What is the perfect day off? Perfect day off. Uh, is to wake up with nothing on my schedule, no texts, uh, reminders from Tim, uh, no meetings, none of that stuff. Just a complete day off. Just leave me alone. <laughs> we now know what the perfect day off is for tight end Chris Cunningham, and it's leave him alone. Right. <laughs> Chris, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? Goodbye, Monarch Nation. Coach, you're not going to leave that kid alone. He's got a future. He does, and he's in graduate school right now working on his master's degree. Tremendous athlete, Bruce. One of the more athletic tight ends I've had the opportunity to coach, and he's only been with us a short while. Also a really good leader. He, he works well with the other tight ends. They look up to him, excited for him. All right, thanks, Coach. We're going to talk more about Virginia Tech. We'll be right back. Welcome back as we look ahead to Saturday's game in Blacksburg where you are listed as 28-point underdogs. Mm -hmm. The good news is 
is that you beat the Hokies before. The bad news is, is that other than UVA, there's probably not a team that Virginia Tech wants to beat more than mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah, and when you think about it, Bruce, this isn't just a home-and-home -home series. This is a 13-game series. We've played twice. We've each won a game. We're back there. They come back to us in a couple of years, so it's, it's developing uh, into a series. Now, we're always going to be underdogs, Bruce. You know it and I do it. They're the bigger program. They've got more than we do. Uh, but we've got a formula on how to play them. And our formula is this. We just try to make enough plays to hang around. Just try to stay in the ball game. Similar to what Norfolk State did to us Saturday night. When you're a huge favorite, Bruce, you're expected to win by a lot of points. From our standpoint, we've got to find a way to stay in this football game to have some success. Old Dominion. And Virginia Tech, one and one in the series. But it's great for the state. Mm -hmm. Game two, Old Dominion at Virginia Tech, Saturday at noon on ESPN. You, Coach, good luck. Don't Thank forget you. to join us every Wednesday night at 1045 here on Fox 43 for the Old Dominion Football Show. Set your DVRs now for the entire season. Good night. Have a great night, everybody.